Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to make decisions using analytical hierarchical process or, or also known as AHP. So let's get started. And we're back. In today's video, we'll be focusing, discussing primarily how to make decisions using uh, a more advanced uh, method uh, on making decisions using different criteria. Uh, factors, uh, different uh, alternatives by using matrices, uh, creating different matrices so that you can determine which is the best option for you. Now, in our previous video, which I strongly recommend checking them out before continuing with this video, uh, a simpler version of this method is known as the multi-factor evaluation process or MFEP. It's a simple process of using the same processes or same context but in a more uh... hi my name is John. and we're back in today's video uh, as i mentioned we'll be discussing how to make decision using ahp or analytical hierarchical process now analytical hierarchical process involves the process of uh, identifying different factors in choosing the best option and the different alternatives uh, options that you're considering in order to make the best purchase here or decision now you can have a, a, a plethora of factors or options in consideration but the process is is the same so in this scenario we'll you be using uh, an example uh, for example if you're planning to buy a, a new smartphone and the question here is how do you make the best best purchase now let's say you have three options to consider so i'm a big fan of uh, samsung so you know, the latest one is the s22 uh you have the base model and then you have the higher tier or mid tier is the s22 plus and the uh, top tier is the s22 ultra here so which of those three models uh should you buy here now uh, aside from the alternatives that you're considering you have to consider the different factors so you get the a multitude of factors here but in our case here we'll keep it simple uh, narrow it down to three so in terms of design or aesthetics features and also price here so you have three alternatives three factors here so in AHP, we're going to create different matrices here different tables consider considering all of those options and by comparing them which is preferred from equally preferred or to extremely preferring one over the other here so comparing two at a time here so all you have to do is follow the process here and i'll showcase here in the end of it uh, by using excel here so please stay tuned so you can find out uh what the best option in the scenario here anyway so let's go to the example here now one of the main uh aspects in considering or using ahp here is in order to create those matrices as mentioned earlier you need to identify or list uh, create a scale uh, as a table implies here so if we were to zoom closely so the scale is ranging from one to nine let's zoom further from one being equally preferred meaning both options or alternatives you're considering to the extreme of uh, a score of nine which is you extremely prefer one over the other here so we'll better illustrate that in our matrices or two so everyone can have a better uh, idea what we're talking about here so first and foremost we need to create the first matrix here or the table here as mentioned so you have the different uh, alternatives here from your rows and your columns as well so you're comparing it and then this pertains to what factor you're considering in terms of design here so in terms of design which do you prefer more the, the base model the plus or the uh, ultra here so you scale it with from one to nine here so in this example let's say you're comparing the s22 base model and the s22 plus here so let's say my preference is uh, is a three which is uh, an equivalent to moderately preferred so what does that mean so s22 uh, model uh, is moderately preferred over the S22 plus is what it's saying here so how about if you were to compare the S22 base model and the uh, ultra here so let's say I uh, I use the value of 9 which is extremely preferred 
meaning the S22 base model is extremely preferred over the Ultra model here. And then we need to fill in the rest. So you have the S22 Plus comparing the Ultra. So let's say in this case, we're using a 6 here, which states that uh, you uh, the S22 Plus is strongly to very strongly preferred over the S22 Ultra. Still following? So once you've uh, identified it, so obviously this can be subjective depending on your preference. So for as low as one, you equally prefer both of those models to the opposite extreme, you prefer one over the other here. So this is where the subjectivity comes in. But once you've laid it out, we'll use the different matrices to, to progress here. Now, once you've laid in the comparisons of the three models here, you have to fill in the rest here. So the thing you have to remember here is obviously in this matrix, there's the opposite of the comparison between the uh, different models here. So from the S22 to S22 Plus, uh, you gave a rank of three. So here in the S22 and S22 Plus, uh, you have to provide the opposite. Uh, of its whole number which is a fraction of 1 over 3 sorry which is equivalent to 0.33 so you have to do for the other parts as well so in the case of the s22 versus the ultra you give a 9 so here the 22 and ultra so you get its fraction of 1 over 9 you get 0.11 and then for the plus versus the ultra you have a 6 so here you fill in 1 over 6 Okay, now if you notice diagonally, just fill in the values of one for each one since S22 and 22 are the same. So equally preferred, equally preferred, equally preferred. Okay, so this is the first matrix that you're going to do. Now we're not yet done. So we need to get the totals for each column here. So simply get the sum. You get 144 for the first column, and then you get the second and third column here. So this is just for the first matrix in terms of design. We have to do this two more times for the other factors you're considering in terms of uh, price and uh, what's the other one? Uh, price and features here. So uh, let's continue here. So you have already created the table here. So let's fill in the values again. So in this case, is it always that you have to fill in the value on the upper right corner side of the table? Not necessarily. It depends on the premise or on the problem that you're given here. So you can always start at the bottom here. So in this case, for the feature, uh, the S22 Plus compared to the base model of 22 in terms of feature, uh, I gave a score of 2, which is uh, the S22 Plus is equally to moderately preferred uh, over the base model of S22. And then if we were to continue the Ultra versus the 22 base model, I gave a score of 8, which means the Ultra uh, is very to extremely strongly preferred over the base model. And to fill in the rest, you have uh, the comparisons of Ultra and Plus. I gave it a 5, which is strongly preferred. The Ultra is strongly preferred over your uh, Plus model here. And then we do the same op opposite by providing the uh, fraction uh, of its counterpart. So for the 22 uh, and plus, so it's 2, so it should be equals 1 over 2. Keep pressing the fraction. So that's 0.5. And then for the 22 and ultra, so it's 8, so 1 over 8. And then for the comparisons of plus and ultra, which is 5, so it's 1 over 5. It's 0.2. And then you fill in the rest with 1, 1, and 1. Okay. And then we do the same for price here. So in this case, my the assignment that I gave. So S22 versus the plus, I gave a 1. And then for the S22 and the ultra, I gave a 6 score. And then for the 22 plus versus the ultra, I gave a score of 3. And then we do the fraction again on the other side. The plus and 22 is one the fraction of one is one over one it's still one and then for the 22 and ultra is six so that's one over six and then for the plus and ultra which is three so it will be one over three then we'll fill in the rest with one and then 
we need to get the total for each of the columns here so let's just copy the formula okay and another one okay so once done here you have to add another table uh, in this case you're going to create a matrix for the different uh, factors here so we started with the different alternatives based on the factors now we're going to create another matrix similar to this one but in terms of preference of the different factors here so it would look something like this okay so i've created a separation is to not confuse what we're trying to do here so if you notice the first three matrices here focuses on the different alternatives based on the different factors the fourth one as you notice here focuses on the different priorities of your uh, factors here so again we'll do the same process here what are your preferences over a scale of one to nine so in this case uh in terms of features versus design i gave a score of eight and then for price and design i gave a score of three and then for features and price i gave a score of three also and then uh, let's do the opposite now so for features and design so that's one over eight and then for design and price, it's 1 over 3. And then for features, features and price is 1 over 3 as well. Okay, and then we'll fill in the rest with 1, 1, and 1. Okay? So you notice there's a separation. The first three table focuses on the different alternatives based on the factors. So we're going to prioritize in our next matrix here. The fourth table here focuses only on the factors priority here. Okay, so let's create some lines here. So it would highlight the table we've just created. Okay. Then next is we're going to do the same process now and then uh, prioritize find the priority which is the preferred one oh, we forgot to do the total here so we need to include this as well paste here okay now you may notice at the bottom here there's a table here including the num the, the number of alternatives or the n value uh, the table is provided here given the uh, the ri or the ratio index here which we will use later on to identify which is the best uh, option here so we'll come back to it in a bit here anyway so the next part now you're going to do is create uh, a different matrices uh, using the different designs features price and the different factors here so what do we do so let's copy the table oh wait let's open this one okay let's copy the first table okay let's remove the heading and the content so in here, we're simply going to get the, we're going to divide the individual rows versus its column total to get the corresponding value. So in the case of the S22 base model for design, we divide its corresponding ratio divided by the column total, which is 144. We do the same for the S22 plus 0.33 divided by 144. And then we do the same for the ultra 0.11 divided by 1.44. Okay. Let's remove the box for now. And then we simply uh, drag this to the other row columns so you can fill it up. Once it's filled up, we have to create a fourth column here. So we'll he the heading would be priority. So how do you determine the priority here? So it's very simple. You simply get the average of the three uh, values of the same row here. So in this case, for the S22, for the S22 Plus, and for the Ultra. Sorry, for the Ultra here. Okay. So once done, now we can create the box again. And then we can copy and paste now for the other tables here. So... For in terms of features, you get the corresponding value. And then for price, you get the corresponding value. And lastly, for the factors. So obviously, you have to change the heading here. OK. 
Okay, and then for the head in here, it's design, features, and price. Okay, so from the original matrices, we've now uh, done the normalized value. The next part now is to create the vectors here. There are different vectors that we need to, to, to identify. Uh, first and foremost is the weight sum vector, uh, as it's called. So how do we do that? <clears throat> so it's very simple. So you need to use a Excel function formula here to, to fill in the values and uh, the, the, uh, the function formula that you're supposed to use is uh, it's called uh, mult, uh, matrix multiplication or M mult where it multiplies different matrices here. So which I'm going to show you now in order to fill in the other rows in the same column. So you highlight the three cells here, as you notice, then I type in the formula equals to M mult. If you open the parenthesis, it's asking you for the two arrays here. The two arrays you already did in the previous table or in the previous matrices. So you select the first uh, matrix uh, array here, the, the values inside the box, comma. And then the second array you're going to select is the second table, which contains the priority value here. So it's going to multiply the corresponding rows and columns to the corresponding matrices in the other table here. So you close the parentheses and do not press enter yet. So in order to fill in the other uh, cells below, press and hold control shift and enter and it will fill in the other values automatically. So we'll now do the same for, for the other uh, factors and for the uh, fourth one as well. And there you go. So now you've started from the first matrix to the normalized to the weight sum vec vectors here. So now just to do a short recap. So in creating or identifying the right options for your AHP method, you have to create different matrices or in this case tables to be able to identify the preferences comparing uh, depending the different options that you have two at a single time here. So we've created so far four uh, tables for each part. So you have the first table, the second is normalized, the next is the uh, weight sum vector. Next is we're going to create the consistency vector here, which we'll do right now. So in order to determine the weight, uh, the consistency, sorry vector you simply divide the weight sum vector divided by the priority of the corresponding row and you do the same for the other options here so let's put in the box again and then we'll fill in the other rows as well and copy and paste so now you have the consistent vector of each of the different tables here so we still have one more table to do before we can finally identify what is the best option here. So for the last one, we simply need to identify three, three, three aspects in terms of the lambda, consistency index, and the consistency radio here, which is very simple. So I will illustrate here. So first is we need to identify the lambda and the consistency index and the, consist and the consistency ratio. Now, how do we determine the, uh, the lambda here? It's very easy. You already solved it in the previous column here, the consistency vector by getting the average of the consistency vectors that you have in that particular table. Once you have the lambda, you can now solve for the consistency index here by getting the, uh, by dividing the difference of the lambda minus n. And in this case, n represents the number of alternatives in your problem here. In this case, we have three alternatives here. So we'll use three in this formula divided by uh, n minus one. Again, n is equals to three minus one. And that will be your consistency index here. Once you have the index, you cannot solve for the consistency ratio. Now to solve for the consistency ratio, the formula is uh, consistency index divided by the corresponding ratio index, which uh, I showed you earlier here at the bottom, the table here below. So how do you identify which one you're supposed to use? 
since you can get different values for your n here. So you're going to type in a function formula vlookup. It's going to ask you look up what value. So in this case, what's our n value, which is 3. And then you're going to select the table array, as you notice. So we have to select the values here. Okay. And then the next part is going to ask you what column index you want it to be displayed in your uh, computation. So uh, is it the first or second column? So if let's say our n is 3, so it should reflect the corresponding ratio uh, index, which is 0.58. So we want 2 as our uh, displayed output and then close parenthesis. So it should display the value and now it's now 47 or 0 0.47 so let's put in the box and then let's do the same for the others so let's copy and then paste it all over and then paste oh wait i forgot to lock the cells so you need to lock the cells here so when you copy and paste so it would not skip and get uh, the value that we did earlier so we highlight the cells that we want to copy and paste and voila so we now get the corresponding lambda consistency index and ratio for each of the different uh, factors given the different alternatives and now even the factors at the bottom here now why are we solving all of this uh, values here so that we can identify and create one more table to identify which is the priority, which option is the best uh, based on the different criteria should provided here. So we just have to do one more table. So please bear with me. So in this case, we just need to create uh, another table. So we'll copy the fourth one. So not the values. So you want the column heading is uh, corresponding to each of the factors that you're considering from design, features, and price. Okay. And then for the rows, it should correspond to the different alternatives here, which is the S22 base model, uh, the plus, and even the ultra here. Okay. Let's remove the lines first. Okay. So the question you might ask yourself, so how do we fill in the values? Do we have to do some more computations here? No, not really. You already did the hard part. So the key part now is you just have to copy the values. Which values? So let me show you. So for the design column, you already solve it, which is the first table that you did, which is here, 0 0.658. And then for the S22+, plus, it's 0.282. And then for the ultra for design is 0 0.060 okay and then we do the same for uh features so for the 22 yep, 0 0.87 and then let's copy and paste the rest and then for the price it's 0 0.497 and copy the rest so if you notice, we already showcased the first three, which is the, the matrix here. We need, we still need to add <coughs> the priority also. So let's copy this one. So how do we do that? It's very simple. You use the function formula again, uh, mmult, by selecting all of the cells here, then equals to mmult. You multiply two arrays again, so you select the first array within this table, comma, and select the priority in the fourth table at uh, the uh, the table above by selecting those three priorities, and it would multiply the three. And again, when you close the parentheses, don't select enter yet. Press and hold Control Shift Enter, so it would populate the values here. Let's adjust the values. Okay, so let's do a comparison here. So let's take a look, closer look in this table. See what do we have here. So let's zoom in closer. Okay, in terms of values here, uh, to choose the best selection, you choose by looking at the highest value here. And we can clearly see here that out of the three, uh, 0.54 has the highest. Sorry. 0.54 has the highest 
uh, value which means that choosing the S22 Ultra is your best option here. And if we were to look closely, which is kind of interesting in terms of design, out of the three, Ultra is not ranked or has the highest ratio here. But in terms of feature, it has uh, by, by far the largest margin in terms of uh, preference here. But in terms of price, it has the lowest here. But considering the different factors, considering the different options here, uh, the, by far the clear winner here by, by significant margin is the S22 Ultra here. So this showcase how powerful AHP is in terms of decision making if done uh, properly here and as we can clearly see here uh, it, it does its jobs here so it, it can be daunting at first but you know if we follow the steps as mentioned here you know you can arrive at the uh, what I call this you can arrive at the conclusion here similar to mine as well now obviously there are advantages and disadvantages to this because the main advantages of using HP is you can add more factors and alternatives here and and still get the, the the outcome that you're looking for but one of the disadvantages obviously it gets more complicated quickly uh, le le let's say compared to the M A M F E P or the multi-factor evaluation process but at the end of the day uh, depending on the situation the 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 time that you are afforded if you have more time then you can use this process to make your best decision but if not you can use more simpler more accrued methods to make the best decision whether it's under certainty uncertainty probabilistic or in this case using the multifactorial evaluation process or even the ahp process here Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully, you find this video helpful. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Continue so supporting the channel. So, we've already reached our target for 1,000. So, let's, let's keep this going. Hopefully, we can get this much, much farther. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave your comments down below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you have any suggestions for future topics, you can leave your comments down below as well. And we'll see how can we help you in that aspect as well. And for more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. Uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.